My name is Lindy Ward and I'm Curator of Textiles and Lace at the Powerhouse Museum. We're presenting to you on this small video a session that we did at a recent seminar called Behind the Scenes that was held for regional galleries around New South Wales. I was accompanied by Kate Chidlow, who you'll see on the left, a conservator, and um, I'm standing in the middle. So Kate is showing how, uh, how we pack and store costume, which is very important for prolonging its life and keeping it fresh and avoiding deterioration. Uh, often the fabrics are padded with rolls and uh, little pouches of tissue so that the fabric doesn't get flattened and pressed and this with silk is very dangerous for the silk. Now on the right hand side is a beautiful dress worn by Lady Piper, uh, Captain Piper's wife in 1826 and next to it uh, to the right of me is the beautiful wedding gown from the Bathurst Historical Society worn in 1797. Now we're going to dress on the mannequin for everybody to see a garment uh, that was worn in 1883 uh, for Elizabeth Jane Howard on her marriage in Orange in New South Wales. We're using a wire mannequin for this purpose and the reason is that the garment is so very tiny, the waist is so minute that uh, we can't get a standard size mannequin to fit it. So we use uh, for the, these purposes a polyethylene coated wire mannequin that uh, I will uh, tell you later where you can find those on our website. Kate has uh, taken a piece of fabric, put it over the torso of the mannequin um, and we have before this we have measured carefully the garment and the mannequin to make sure that they match and that we're not going to stretch the bodice. We've now got the tulle petticoat which is made from a length of tulle with a cotton band that ties with velcro, fastens with velcro and so it can be easily adjusted for different garments. Now the skirt of the garment is uh, quite critical in the dating and you'll find that putting a garment on display on a mannequin actually helps you to date a garment. So you'll find that uh, a, full, a full garment uh, from the 1850s will have the fullness of the skirt right the way around and rather a drooping shoulder line. From the 1865 the fullness is going slightly to the back and from 1870 uh, you'll get a bustle with the uh, fabric pulled right back uh, into um, uh, often into a train. Now we're looking at Kate uh, she's got uh, the format for her condition report which is a very simple way of doing it and I thoroughly recommendable. Uh, a photo of the object and over the top a mylar sheet and then you can mark on the mylar sheet all the damage and uh, staining uh, on the garment without having to describe it in words much easier. Here we are with two pairs of gloved hands dressing the skirt onto the wire mannequin which has been adjusted to shape and in this case the waistband has no hooks and eyes so in order to secure it we will place a uh, cotton tape around the waist and sandwich the waist of the skirt so that we're holding it up without um, damaging the we're not without putting pins or damaging the waistband. You can see that we've adjusted the mannequin so that the skirt is exactly the right length here. So Kate is tying the cotton tape over the waistband and that's going to hold very nicely. Turn it round to the front where you can see a classic 1880s style with the uh, draping at the top of the skirt and a straight front. And now we take the bodice and we see the 
the boning and the uh, waistband that's inside the bodice, which is linen lined, that makes it a lot stronger. So uh, a silk bodice which doesn't have a linen lining it has to be very carefully checked to make sure it's strong enough to be put on display like this. So we're now we're trying the bodice on. Two people is a much easier, much safer to, to use two people for this purpose. And we're finding that it's just a little bit too big. To try and do that up is straining the garment too much. So we're going to take it off and I'm going to squeeze the mannequin in and the the wire mesh mannequin is is very useful for this purpose because we can reduce the size we're reducing the shoulders very slightly and the sides so that uh, there's absolutely no stress at all on the garment and that's why we've just loosely put the fabric over so we can easily adjust it without any problems Now we're going to um, try the bodice on again and Mrs. Howard who had a minute waist is slowly coming back into reality and it really is a case that when you're dressing mannequins you really are um, almost um, resurrecting the this event and um, you learn a lot about the date and the style of the garment by do, do, doing this whole process. The garment to a certain extent will speak for itself in how it wants to be shaped. Now you can see that the front does join and Kate has taken her gloves off so that she can very carefully button it up and I suggest you only button up as, as soon as you're sure that everything else is right. You don't want to have to keep undoing them and make sure that the threads that join the buttons are strong enough to do this. So she's very carefully buttoning. We're not going to do them all up as this is a demonstration. And then you can see that there's just a little, the, the bodice is looking a little bit limp because it's, it's not tightly on the mannequin. So um, a few adjustments. It's good to stand away from it, look at it from all, all angles and um, just adjust it here and there so that the drape is correct. I'm taking some tissue paper to just uh, lift the shoulders a little bit and to fill out the bust of the bodice so that it looks as though a human being is inside it. Very very gently push the tissue underneath the bodice. When this is all done you can put a lovely piece of silk in the neck if you if you wish to uh, enhance the neck after this is complete. So in goes the other shoulder and that just gives a slightly more defined look to the bodice. And Kate is showing the rolls of acid-free tissue paper that have been used to uh, store the skirt carefully so that the fabric didn't get folded too harshly. So now we're going to turn the, um, the mannequin around so that we can see the back. And there's another, uh, on a dress of this era, the 1880s, the bustle is important. So we need to add a little bit of uh, tissue underneath the bustle at the back. And just make sure that all the silk is draped attractively below the bustle. Sometimes a photograph will help you when you're doing this if you have a photograph of the same period to, to help you get the silhouette looking correct.
and this bustle has been folded and so there are some sharp creases. We try to soften those and try to make sure that when it's next door that the creases don't occur in the same place. Now Kate has got the train which is attached with buttonholes onto buttons in the back of the skirt and that would have been worn for the wedding itself and probably not very often afterwards. The sleeves, it helps to put um, either tissue or a, a stocking filled with Dacron, a tube filled with Dacron to uh, lift out the sleeves so they're not completely flat and this seam has been a bit folded so it's got some extra creases but you can see now the very tiny waist and the nice silhouette that we've achieved with the, using this tiny mannequin and how small she is information about other equipment that you may like to source can be obtained from the uh, web address www.powerhousemuseum.com slash collection slash preservation and look under products and suppliers to find the sources of mannequins, boxes and other materials.